Enterprise planning, or EPBCS, has several pre-built frameworks or business processes. One of those is the financials framework, which includes pre-built revenue, expense, balance sheet, and cash flow planning. The financials framework has pre-built content to do budgeting, planning, forecasting for income statements, so revenue and expenses, balance sheet, and cash flow. You can turn on various portions of it depending on what you want to use, such as revenue, gross margin planning, expense planning, balance sheet planning, cash flow planning, overall things such as income statement and analysis. If you're using some of the other frameworks like capital, workforce, and projects, you can automatically tie those into the financials framework. Here's a high level flow that you might want to do. Let's say you want to do driver based expense planning to put in place your high level drivers, such as how many people are going to be in your department, how many units you're going to produce. And then maybe you want to use those drivers to calculate overall dollar based expenses. And then you want to see how that trends out because you want to do graphical planning and see, am I bending the revenue curve down? Am I bending the expense curve up? And then maybe you want to change your adjustments, uh, change your assumptions and go back and view your overall results. And then look at those driver based expenses and those trend based expenses together. All of this is totally possible with the financials framework. Within the financials framework, there are four key tabs down the side. There's the overview tab, the driver and trend tab, data entry tab where you're actually putting in new information, and then the reporting tab. The tabs will help guide the users to different forms. For instance, the tab I'm on right now, the driver and trend tab, is where I'm going to go to put in both my driver-based assumptions and then my more trending graphical-based assumptions. At the top, I have my point of view where I'm looking at things like my expense drivers, what entity scenario version I'm on, currency, or what expense account. So in my example here, I'm on total marketing expense. Looking across my pages where I can actually change the dropdown, I'm right now looking at 2016. I may be down below looking at the trend for the driver, what percentage do I want to increase the driver by, what percentage do I want to decrease it by, what do I want to base it on, maybe it's prior year actuals average, maybe it's the current month actual. When I finish doing all the math, I get over to what the new driver value is going to be. It will then take those assumptions I had before and then looking at my percent increase and decrease, multiply those times some sort of dollar value to give me a total dollar value. So in my case, you'll notice I have marketing events of about $930,000. I could then adjust that either increase or decrease. Maybe I need my marketing budget to have another 50,000 in marketing events. I know are going to occur, but I don't know where they're going to occur. I could adjust those either up or down. Graphical planning helps you understand how something is trending. In my case, marketing expense, am I increasing my number of events? Am I decreasing? Am I increasing my cost per event? Am I decreasing, increasing the number of campaigns and decreasing? So we can see both prior year and current year to help us understand, are we bending our cost curve down? Are we bending the appropriate drivers down and the other drivers up? You'll notice the forms do look different. So in my case, on the left, I'm looking at more of a driver-based expense. So I'm determining what is my base assumption, how do I want to change it? And then on the right is more, what am I looking at year over year? So really the trend of the driver. I can then give it a trend assumption. Maybe I want to base it on current year actual. Maybe I want that trend to increase or decrease. Maybe I say my outside audit fees are increasing too much. I want them to trend down 5% per year. And then look at the calculated impact of those assumptions based on the trend that I want. I eventually will get actuals coming in and can start to compare those actuals to my forecast or to my budget. Maybe it's prior year's actuals, looking at how 2014 will affect 2015, 2016, 2017 going farther out. I can also, of course, directly input dollars. This is kind of uh, retro, kicking it old style, but maybe I just have a specific dollar amount that I'm always going to have each year to pay rent or overall utilities. Maybe I have a fixed insurance expense I'm going to look at. I can always type those in. It's going to assume you want to do driver-based, probably some level of trend-based, but direct input is still available to you. The direct input tab is the third one down. Normally I would do some level of assumptions first and then whatever minimal I had left, I would be doing with direct inputs. 
revenue. That's the top one up there within the financials framework. There are also a lot of pre-build dashboards that will come with it to help you understand whether it's revenue or expenses or balance sheet or cash flow. What are my impacts? Maybe actual versus forecast, maybe looking at different segments of my business, maybe looking at different expense categories across. Revenue also has the same concepts. I could look at drivers such as volume or discount percentage or average selling price. And there are also trends as well. Maybe I want my volume to be steadily increasing over time. Maybe I want my selling price to be increasing, but not as much as I want my volumes to be increasing. And likewise, I can ignore both of those, go down to the third tab and directly input what I want the revenue to be. The fourth tab down are my reports. So in this case, it's an overall, again, pre-built overall revenue report showing how I'm doing prior year, actual versus plan, looking at forecast, forecast versus plan, as far out as I have data. There are also a lot of built-in analysis. And then again, that's that top tab. So I can pull up the analysis, whether it's revenue, expense, balance sheet, whatever it might be. And this is really where I'm looking at my pre-built dashboards. Even though they are pre-built, are totally configurable. Down at the bottom, there's also some more analytic reports that I could be doing, maybe at a total income statement level to see how I'm doing with the revenue, with the margin, with the expenses. Pull it all together. Am I actually a profitable company? To turn all this on, you go to console and choose configure. This is also where you would configure the other frameworks, such as workforce, capital projects, or any other frameworks they may or may not be adding in the future. So in my case, I'm gonna to go to console, configure, choose financials, and you'll notice I could turn on revenue gross margin things. Maybe I wanna break down revenue by products or services. I could turn on expenses, various different subcategories and driver libraries I could turn on. I could turn on overall income statement concepts, balance sheet concepts, cash flow concepts. So within revenue and gross margin, maybe I want to plan my revenue by specific SKUs, SKUs, specific products. I could turn that on by checking the product checkbox. That is actually gonna create an entire dimension for me. So I could do both revenue and COGS, essentially to do gross margin planning by whatever those revenue dimensions are I turn on. So it just gives me an additional detailed level of planning I might wanna do. Within the expense planning section, this is where I would turn on essentially which libraries, which drivers I want to have access to. Maybe I wanted to turn on compensation planning, then it would give me various different expenses or burden expenses, such as maybe healthcare costs or insurance costs that are related to those. Drivers you can turn on and off at any time. The dimensions, you really want to get those right at the beginning, but you'll see that this area is not grayed out, so I could add on later if I wanted to, outside services, sales, and compensation. But when I initially created the application, I said, all I really want to do expense planning right now driver wise is marketing travel and entertainment and facilities from the income statement side maybe i want to look at contribution margin maybe i want to do both gross margin and contribution if i turn on something like contribution it's going to add a lot of roll-up accounts and there are some other roll-ups i could turn on as well if i'm going to do income statement planning clearly i need revenue and expense planning as part of that otherwise there would be nothing rolling into my income statement Balance sheet's pretty simple. Uh, do I want to go with direct entry or do I want it to be driver-based? Maybe I want it to flow a portion off of the rest of the income statement. Maybe I want to define how many days are in the period. All that is done through the balance sheet planning portion. The simplest one is really just cash flow portion. Do I want to do direct method? Or I'm actually using my sources of cash, my uses of cash, or do I want it to flow off my operating, investing, financing, income statement, balance sheet portion and feed over to my cash flow? And that wraps up in a nutshell, financials framework.